Hello everybody, FC Racer here, and I am joined with Espo, and we are live and ready to rock out on another action-packed Celeste GSA Any% Percent Tournament match here. How's it going, Espo? Good. I am uh, incredibly excited for this matchup. I saw it, and I was like, I would like to commentate this, because it's, I mean, these are two of the best ones, and it should just be really exciting to watch. Just really high-level gameplay. Oh, yeah, definitely. These two have actually crossed paths before uh, in the GSA Any% Percent Tournament, and it was a fantastic set. Uh, definitely check that VOD out, because it was a nail-biter and just super nuts. So I'm looking to see this same effect here for this one as well. Now, I know that Nero Nero has been um, kind of shifted over more to ARB recently, so it's going to be interesting to see if that's going to play a factor it will. It will. At the same time, uh, TGH has been doing some uh, Super Mario Odyssey, and he was uh, he was struggling beating some of the Koopas in races. So we'll see if he has more luck against Nero here. Uh, so it between the two of them, yeah, it should uh, should be close. I did see he was also practicing Bubs Drop a lot at like I woke up at like two this morning and I looked and I just saw Teach doing Bubs Drop over and over. Oh, okay. So that uh, is a pretty exciting midnight content. Yeah, Teach just loved to do his late night, his night owl streams. So both runners are getting out of Prologue. No hangups there whatsoever. So you dive right into Forsaken City. For those of you that are new to Celeste or just starting out, Forsaken City is a wonderful level that just pretty much showcases all of the tech that we have to offer. And you see they're blaring through. You're seeing hypers, wall bounces, corner boosts, some ultras, like the whole nine yards. It goes by pretty quick, but um, it's a well-level design that showcases pretty much what you're going to be doing for the entire run when you're speedrunning the game. Yeah, and we the first level really has a lot here, and you get to see a lot of this sync. Uh, there's like five or six rooms there where they were just doing the exact same strats. Uh, like to the pixel at the exact same time. Uh, they are now very slightly different, but it's it's a lot of fun to see this at the beginning every time. And you usually see, you know, these first two chapters, they go and are very much the same. Oh, as Nero does take a death there. And then the third chapter is where they often start to differentiate a little bit more. Yeah, and with the first two chapters as well, there's not too much uh opportunity at least for you know like skill wise for a breakout to occur we're not really going to see that until we get in the celestial resort and forward but you know deaths are going to play a big moment i mean i was looking at teach's movement overall i didn't see any mishaps or any you know bumps in the road so it's looking pretty solid so far now i will say that teach at, at one point was on world record pace in one of the runs and i know that he's been doing no resets and he's been grinding out really hard so the idea that um that could happen again that could very well happen today so it's gonna be really interesting to see yeah for sure it's one thing besides just the races it's always interesting to keep an eye on their times and how they're doing compared to world record and compared to their own best ones and all of that Definitely. All right, so Teach is about to get into the battle and chase Neto not too far behind. And again, we're looking at IGT here. So far, they're, they're pretty much in sync from what I can tell. Um, although we're having a little bit of choppiness going on here. I see that somebody died. <laughs> that little instant yeah. of uh, seeing the, the death animation there. Yeah, but, Nero um, took a death there. And so far, it's not too bad. This, by the way, my favorite music of the game. I don't know what yours is, but I love the chase section of Chapter 2. Oh, yeah. A reflection is a... I think it's the most listened to song from Lena's album on Spotify, if I'm not mistaken. And, like, I think it is just an overall favorite from everyone's. I personally do like this song a lot, too. But I like when you... Um, get out of the cutscene when the dream blocks become active. Oh. That part. Mm -hmm. I love that that build up to it. It just gives me time. Mm -hmm. We got Teej getting into awake here. Now, um, 
awake no problems you know no deaths here or there but we're just trying to keep our momentum and flying through and Tej is doing a fantastic job didn't get a corner boost there but that is all right i don't think he normally goes for it he's going to clock out at a 320 nero on the other side now getting some corner boost there and actually picking up speed mm -hmm. so he actually caught up a little bit on that but still about 11 second difference now as we head into resort yeah we saw a 144 from Tej there which is really good so he's uh he's definitely playing well. Yeah, so now Teach actually trying to get the key cycle here. So it was recently discovered, I think maybe a couple weeks ago, where the key will activate when the the front end of the key is facing the um, the keyhole, right? So there's actually like now a subtle new cycle in the game, and people have been trying to optimize their key routes, so to speak. Huh. I, yeah, I know that. Yeah, it's uh, they've been trying to figure out the best way to go for it. And so, uh, you know, anything to save a little bit of time here and there just to, to chop away at. Uh, speaking of saving time, I actually would like to take a moment real quick to uh, give a shout out to Necrovita, who hit sub one hour last night in Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, yeah. So huge congrats to him. Um, you know, he's also in the Super Mario Odyssey league as well so there's a huge accomplishment i mean to put it in celeste terms that's probably when tjh also got sub 30 uh at least I, that's what i would think so huge props to him in that entire community for to coming together and just hitting that milestone i know they've just been so close for so long and then they got exactly one hour uh, yeah i know finally to get that sub hour is exciting feels good man all right, so we got Tej in Huge Mess talking to Ashiro. Nero just behind. And Huge Mess is similar to Awake where um, if you, you know, there's no deaths, but there's it's really easy to get caught up because there's very small, narrow platforms and everything. And both runners doing very well getting out of there. And now we're just going to go through our typical crates, books, towels route here. Oh, and it looks like uh, somebody else also hit sub hour a few hours later as well if i'm reading chat correct so that's pretty that's pretty boss yeah that's uh you get to be i think in the in the video like years later you get to be sort of that one sentence mention instead of like this big long thing of like hey look who beat the bower first uh so it you know it's still exciting but you're just like oh if i had just done it like a day earlier yeah, yeah. but i mean you know if being first isn't always what it's cracked up to be. It's still yeah. a major, you know, that's still like a major accomplishment in its own right too. Especially with like for the sub thirty, we have so many runners that like have hit that um, threshold. I believe all, almost everybody in the league has has, has a sub thirty now. So. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so we've got Tej getting out of huge mess. We've seen that Nero actually taking a death there. Going to have to do an alternate route here. Um, one of the things about Resort that we didn't bring up is that our little Dust Bunny friends here, they are on cycles. And when you die, um, the cycle begins immediately, but Madeline takes about a second and a half to respawn. So that it's just, you know, it's not the same as if you got into the room. So sometimes players <laughs> are going to have to adjust. Um, but so far, no hangups other than that death there, as from what I can tell. Teach about to get into Demo Dash. So give a quick rundown on this. So basically, if you're crouching and in with, a, I think, a three to four frame window, um, you dash and hold down and then press a button three to four frames afterwards, you're going to maintain Madeline's crouching uh, hitbox. And by doing so, you're able to sneak through a four pixel gap uh, that's in resort there. And also, Teach showed out the bonus to getting the task corner boost. Uh, Nero getting it too, so both earners on top of their game right now. Yeah, they're looking good. And uh, Nero was able to, I guess, if we're looking at ways for him to try and sort of cut, shave off time here, he got through the demo dash a little faster than Tej did. Tej had to, you know, adjust Madeline's little feet a little bit there uh, as he tries to sort of, you know, he's Nero's had a few deaths so far. Uh, and so he needs to find ways to try and catch up, basically. Yeah, and this is similar to, um their race against each other in the uh in eight percent tournament the bracket tournament that we had um like nero 
I think Nero was able to start to catch up and pull even slightly ahead once uh, we got into Golden Ridge and moving forward. But um, for the most part, it's like, you know, you, you got to have a nice, sizable lead against TJH when it comes to Summit. <laughs> because, it, like, Summit Summit is basically like TJ's baby. That's like how I like to put it, because he just puts so much time and effort into it, and it's like, he's, the consistency is really just top-notch. It's really hard to try to catch up on him once he gets to that chapter. Yeah. No, and that's, I mean, I think that's an important thing for a lot of people to do, or I don't know, important, but... You know, it's summit such a significant part of the run as Teach gets a nice strat there uh, to get through that those bubbles. Um, but it's like a third or whatever of the run, so you know you want to make sure you are really good at it. Um, as Teach also does the Archie there, important to mention, uh, a solid strat to save a little bit of time as well. Oh, Nero. I think was trying to go for it too, but missed his timing. <laughs> and to go for the traditional strat there. He yeah, has a really he did a really nice backup though to not lose any or much time. It was really nice and smooth. Oh, but that that one though. <laughs> Nero trying to get the I'm sorry, Nero trying to get the wall bounce and uh ate some spikes there. Oh, Lost a lot more time. is currently Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I didn't manage over... to say that. Holy cow. Times that I've been in that position and tried to save myself and failed miserably have been so high um, to where I didn't even really know that if you could for sure save yourself there. Uh, but clearly you can because he just did it. So nice work from Teach there. Yeah, way to turn it around there because uh, Nero just had a long or lost a lot of time. And, you know, that's going to allow Teach to pull ahead. But he was also on the cusp of losing a lot of time, too. Those auto scroll blocks are one of the worst places to take a death in the game. Especially if you're waiting to get to the end of the screen. It's just like all that time is lost. So, very nice of Teach to save that there. But I feel like... I mean, we're pretty close. Actually, times are pretty... Uh, close to each other. So, this is a good representation of like just how close they are it's just a couple screens mm -hmm. so. yeah and we've seen i mean so he's just taken a few deaths nero's taken a few more um and i feel like that's been sort of the story of it so far yeah and Rich doesn't seem to be a uh, very nice today to either run or to well it's just expected i mean it's golden ridge this is probably no, it's not probably. This is my least favorite chapter in the entire game. I do not like this chapter at all. No? Just okay. like with the wind or the the wind and just how each room has just those small like little time saves here and there and everything just seems so technical or you like something doesn't go your way, snowballs are acting up. It's like a whole nine yards. Like I get mad when I like P V in Golden Ridge <laughs> or if I save time. I'm like, why am I saving yeah. time? in the chapter that I hate. Can I get, like, time save in a chapter that is fun? Like, Mirror Temple? <laughs> like, not here. Uh, no, I, I get that. For me, I, like, just the snowballs in the wind were frustrating casually. Just to be able to sort of feel like I can control them more. I I really like that about speedrunning Ridge. Where it's like, hey, snowballs, you're gonna be there. I'm gonna jump on you, and you can deal with it. I feel like just strong and in control you know so powerful yeah they don't like to listen to me <laughs> so i'm like i'm gonna make it and they're like no you're not i mean yeah, i know it's not a set timer but i think it's just that my timing might be off yeah you just haven't learned to become a snowball whisperer yet. yep all right so now teach getting up the hold on <clears throat> the yeet let's go and Nero's stepping up too. Are we gonna get a double? Uh oh. We will. Can we get that double? Yeet! Let's go! Woo! One of my favorite things to do. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's like it's the, the coolest meme-ish thing that we have to offer in, in the run. <laughs> it feels Teach good actually. to pull off too. Yeah, definitely. Oh man, Teach has a very decent time. He had a 112. He did take a death. But Nero on the other side, hold on. Wow. Is he gonna get 
a 110. So, okay, very nice. I think the big difference that we've seen between the two of them for that uh, tape grab section is Teach took a death uh, in heading towards the first key. So, again, we're, this is a lot closer yeah. than, in, you know, we're, we're kind of just casually talking and having a good time here, but um, it's definitely a lot closer than uh, it appears. But, you know, and well, especially when we come here, we got Bubs Drop coming up, so let's see uh, how we're going to handle this one. Uh oh, <laughs> that's a that's an oops. That'll oops. do it. Oh yeah. my, hitting it a, a little early there. Oh, that was also weird. Senior actually paused uh, on the way up. I wonder if that's uh, something that he's figured out on his own. This is huge though because now Nero is going to pull ahead in this race. Yeah, no, and so that's been uh, two from. PGH. Oh. Oh, he's gonna make it out though. But having some trouble here in this room too. This room always gives me trouble too. Uh I don't understand how sometimes like I feel like I'm I'm getting enough height to grab that block and it's just not happening. It's yeah. really annoying. No, it's tough. Uh and we had that race recently where uh someone, I forget who was stuck on it for like a minute. So if you don't have that sort of like muscle memory and everything for it. it can be it can be tough yeah it was almost to the point where like they should have um just went the intended route like just <laughs> just go for that <laughs> yeah sometimes that is faster and then you know trying to trying to be stubborn about it. yeah we got ourselves we got ourselves a nice little battle here uh, you know i'm always down for lead changes in these races so definitely hyped about that especially because like i said you know nero's got it's it's a it's pretty decent so far a pretty decent lead if i say so myself yeah and Nero going for the in that column room sort of the more advanced corner boost strat there um he let the fish pass by him but then the fish came back and he was able to sort of salvage it uh which was nice from him as he gets into the gauntlet here oh was it okay nice adjustment there so that was really impressive. That was very quick. Ooh. Oh, Teach taking a death here in this room also. It's going to further extend Nero's lead here as we get into Reflection. We come up to the final screen here of Temple. Nero looking nice. It's, uh, yeah, about a 2.30. It's a good time. It's a very decent time. So Teach getting through the impossible room here. So we're looking at about 11 second lead on Nero's side. It's definitely a nice cushion, to <laughs> say the least. But um, yeah. anything can happen. We, <laughs> we have a long way to go before we uh, hit that finish line. We do. And you were talking earlier about how, you know, People want a nice lead going into Summit, going against TGH. So we'll see if that comes into play here. Mm -hmm. oh, or if uh, one of the first screens of Reflection will do it as well. Yeah, actually, in the previous in the previous tournament, um, Nero had a hang up. He had the lead, and he actually had a huge time loss in Reflection. He's already passed it. It was right, right at the beginning. He missed one of the feathers and fell all the way back down to the start. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but that was where, you know, uh, a mishap happened. Also, you know, Teach has gotten a few more quicker strats in Summit. I'm not sure if Nero has been doing the same in, like, kind of polished up a couple screens here or there. I don't know. Probably depends on if, uh, there are things you can do in ARB as well. That is true. So both runners now kind of going through. It's about a green difference between the two of them and again you know uh let's see i'm trying to think of of some key rooms here you got top room coming up in hollows um i don't think ravine is going to play any role here because nero usually goes well he has been, he has gone for the safer route and grabbing the checkpoint so i don't think that that's yeah. going to be too bad on him um Ideally, it's really just gonna. I think we're gonna have to see how this battle and fight goes. 
Because Vatalin has been a little uh, mischievous in the league the past couple of, your, of races here, so. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting to see, too, because with um, ARB, you go 6B now. Um, yeah. So if uh, Nero hasn't been playing Reflection quite as much, or the A side of Reflection. And if uh, that'll end up coming into play. It's really interesting. Oh no, they go, they go to six B so they get the extra heart, right? Isn't that the the plan? Yeah. Okay. So, because normally it would save, hypothetically in a good world, like five seconds or something if you did really well, um, six A over or six B over six A. But getting a heart normally in ARB takes like thirteen seconds or something like that. So you get that little bit extra cushion. Um, okay. Have when you're playing 6B. I'm seeing someone in chat saying that there's only two seconds for Nero now. We have to check here as he clocks into this battle and fight. It didn't seem like Tej caught up like that. All right, so 740, 1745. Oh wow, I think Tej did. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's like a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somehow, Teej just shredded his way through. Oh my god. Yeah, and there was there was at least one pretty costly death um, from Nero there towards the beginning. And then there were a couple other minor things um, and some strats that you saw Teej did that Nero just didn't do. So all of that put together uh, can make up for it. Also, we should be getting a sync here. Uh... I know we, we, we usually go for a summit, but we're actually going to get one here, because this one is looking pretty darn close. There we go. Oh, in my favorite, yeah, in my favorite strat. Am I going to am I gonna see a sync of this, please? Because that would be dope. Just about. That's like one of my favorite tricks. Oh, I didn't even get yeah. womp womp. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm looking at these stills in, um... Oh! Nero takes a death. <laughs> yeah, they... Oh, no! As we're looking them, it really showcases off the beautiful art that Celeste has. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. But, yeah, it, uh... Let's take a death, and, yeah. Beach has definitely more than caught up. We see the phase two of the battle line fight now uh, for Tej and now for Nero as well. Uh, my cat is scratching at the door. I will be right back. No worries. I know. How, I know. I know the feels on that. All right. So we are. Getting towards the final screen here. Now, this final screen has caused a lot of problems with a lot of runners in the league. You're going to see how this one pans out. Tej first at bat here. Nero not too far behind. So far, so good. Okay, Tej is going to get out. Nero getting the fast cycle as well. Oh, not getting enough momentum, but able to save it. Mm -hmm. All right, sweet. All right, yeah, so that's, a, that's a really key screen there for both of them. We are getting ready for... This uh, yeah, I hope you guys are buckled in, because this one's about to be nutty buddy. I thought that uh, my cat wanted to watch, but the second I opened the door, she just ran away. So. I should say that my cat just walked into my office. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, here we go to Summit. Also, for anyone definitely paying attention, uh, Tennessee in the March Madness tournament was up by a ton and now has blown all of that completely and it's going to overtime. But anyways, uh, we see Teach here starting with zero meters. It's for anyone unaware of the game, uh, you just fell down a mountain in the previous chapter and now you're making your way back up. 
Uh, so it starts with this chapter six section because that's the lowest uh, point of the mountain, basically. And then you'll see chapters one, two, three, four, five, and then the summit coming through. It is classic cat. My cat is a cat in every sense of the word. All right, so we're gonna head into 500 here now. I'm. I feel like that there's gonna be opportunity for Nero to um, catch up, particularly not this screen that Teach is on, but the next two. I don't know if Teach is gonna go for the fast strats here. We'll see. Okay, so he's getting that one. He's gonna get the second one. Yeah, this room's the worst. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. That's he fine. went for both of them. Keeping that pressure on. Uh, yeah, someone asking in chat, how does Cat make money? Uh, I don't believe that they do. Uh, both are now in 500. And we're coming up on the dream blocks here. Uh, so in the summit, chapter seven, um, you we'll see more of sort of hypering out of dream blocks so you can hyper out of them it's a little difficult um but the reason why we see it a lot more in summit than other chapters is because you lose a dash when you do it uh and it becomes more valuable in summit when you have two dashes and you can still do something afterwards so right here from tgh we see this screen hyper 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 it looks really nice uh, but it's also really tough to do and can be really punishing if you mess it up uh, but they both get through this just fine. They're professionals. Yeah, 1000 is probably one of the, the funnest sections in the game. It that is, is a summit. Yeah, I love anything with the dream blocks, so I'm good with that. And then now we have uh, probably a lot of people's least favorite section. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the resort part. I would say it is uh, definitely one of my least favorites i am okay they're, they're making their way through i'm sorry i'm having like a little difficulty on my playback here hmm. well, this is a little choppy okay teach goes for the top strat now uh no frank or z there saves a very small amount of time but any amount of time saved is good and we see nero go for it as well He's been doing uh, more than just ARB there, clearly. In updating some of those strats. As we get to my personal favorite section, which is 2,000 meters, uh, between the Ultra and the Room Before auto scroller skip, and then the auto scroller skip, 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 it's there's just a lot of satisfying things here. Yeah, like we see in the snowball room here, and then the auto scroller skip skip. Oh, T's not feeling it today. Very interesting. I respect the move though. We'll see. Nero, on the other hand, he's like, "Now nah, we're going for it." Hold no. on. <laughs> and it pays he off for this. him. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, nice. no problem. That is definitely uh, the break that Nero needed. And again, like, I respect the play from Teach, playing it a little safe and consistent. But Nero t taking that gutsy move is just going to make it, you know, that even more on his tail. Like, Teach has to play super clean. Yeah. As uh, Jump says in the chat, just one bad death from TGH, and that could just tie it up right there. And we're going to, I think, as we move into the next section of 2500, uh, the first long room... 2500 uh has been known to cause a little bit of drama here and there i don't let's see yeah teach option actually teach teach playing very safe he's not opting for the corner boost there um and just really trying to hold on to his lead this is the room i was talking about it is not a problem for teach nero about yeah. to get there as well and we see about a 10 second lead uh for tgh here so it makes sense for him to try and play it a little safe and preserve that yeah, you wanna you wanna keep it close, especially with like we have our pretty much a nice representation of where they're at. A death just can cause all kinds of problems here. Teach getting the thread the needle, 
getting ready for his door skips. Gets through all of it, no problem. Oh, oh, there we go. That's that literally thing. as I say yeah. the words, no problem. Uh, he goes and does this. It wasn't a terrible place to die on this room, but this is definitely one of the longest, uh, more punishing ones. This screen here, as he heads up to 3,000 meters. Yeah, that was still a lot of that lead to get cut into. Teach coming in at 2611. Nira coming in at a 2616. So five second difference here. Um, that was close. Yeah, this is really close, especially what we have to offer here on 3000. You've got. Let me see. Let me go ahead and just name off a couple of uh, danger zones here. Um, I'm going to say flag 25, I think it is. This one right here in particular. Um. Flag 20 has just been known to cause a little bit of... Uh-oh. <laughs> cause a little problems there. Teach a little bit of fumble, allow Nero to just ever slightly get more time, but Nero taking the slower strat and actually grabbing that flag. So, had that opportunity, but, you know, just... Oh, as I said, flag 20. Flag 20. That's a, yeah, exactly yeah. what I was talking about. Oh, for both runners, too. Look at that. <laughs> They're trying to get the, those super fast strats, and it just wasn't cutting out. We're moving into updraft now. Let's see... Um, all right, can you call the next one? Yeah, um, I'm... Flag, uh, 14. I mean, that's... No, I, don't, I mean, 14 is tough, but I don't think either one is going to have a problem with that one. I'm more looking forward to seeing if they're going to... If someone's going to skip flag number 10, because uh, the hot trend right now is they've been skipping 9. Ooh, and yeah. Obviously flag eight. 9 skip is nice. Yeah, but that just seems really, really risky. So I'm going to say T is probably going to play it safe, and I'm going to say Nero's going to go for it. But we have to be mindful of that section. Um, and then Flag 7, too. Flag 7 has also just been... I mean, the, the later half of Updraft has just been causing problems for no reason. Yeah. But now, as we say that, too, um, Nero, actually, in one of the races that he had the lead, he lost it on Flag number 4. Now, we saw Teach taking Flag 9, not skipping it, and Nero doing the same. Yeah. And on flag eight there, that's it's kind of a scary uh, corner that you take there that I've seen a lot of people die on on these races, but TGH, neither of them have any problems. And here, I mean, flag five, four, three, two, and one uh, can all present issues. So we'll see here as they're both incredibly close. Yeah, this is really close. Again, like I said, flag number four, Nero took a death running into Spike's head on um, and just, Ooh, oh my gosh, there's which... <laughs> two... And, oh, oh boy! <laughs> okay, TGH still has a little bit of a lead. Yeah, not a whole lot, because we're looking at that IGT timer here. Um, I haven't stinking. seen Nero's. Yeah, I haven't seen Nero's movement in Flag One, but I know TJ's movement has been absolutely nuts. But he's going to play this one super clean. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. All right, as so we come up on the end here, and okay, that's the key part that he gets over. So far, so good. I think TJ might get this one. All right, 52. and he takes yeah. it. Yeah. Woo! Four second difference, folks. Yikes. Excellent job for both runners there for that first race. We only got one done. We got two more to go. Woo. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, excellent outing for both runners there. That was great. I really thought that, uh, I mean, those were two deaths that Teach had there on flag three. But, I mean, I guess if you're going to have two deaths, those were pretty good ones to have because those were... Just real quick. Yeah, wow. Very, very short. And yeah, he managed to take it by about four seconds. So uh, well done to both of them, though. Yeah, Tej actually uh, having an 823 summit in Nero with an 820. So Nero having the faster summit overall. But um, I mean, it's still, you know, decent time. De definitely commendable race time here. Sub 29 for both. Yeah. For sure. Uh, and I guess this is as good of time as any to say that uh, the way this works is that there are three races in total that we will play. Not a best of three, um, but we will play three races no matter what. Uh, but you do get points for taking two of the races and like sort of winning it. It is correct. Mm -hmm. And actually, as we get everybody set up here, now we're gonna try to switch up our um our region here real quick. 
because I was in at, uh, for at least for my commentary section, it's been a little choppy on the video. I got nervous. I was actually watching the stream and I was like, it's not, it's not bad for them. So it's just, but, um, yeah, you know? well, I was looking at the chat, like, are they experiencing more issues? It didn't seem like it. So I was like, okay, well, as long as they could see it, there's just yeah. a little, little bit of downtime here and there. That's what's right. important. Um, as a quick update, my cat now back in the room. Um, curious to see. I mean, I think it was because she heard that things were getting a little closer and she was like, okay, you know, I want to check this out. It's a good one. And she's decided to stick around for the next two. And I think my cat everyone here has as well. Yeah, I think my cat has uh, decided to go find her own entertainment, which is fine, you know. Understandable. Sweet, There's a lot of good entertainment out there. She um, actually likes. Sorry. Oh no, that's fine. She she definitely likes to watch me play like FPSs more than mm. me when I play Celeste. So I'm a little heartbroken at that. <laughs> but you know, it's okay. Yeah, it, you know, different people like different things. Uh, my cat likes Celeste a lot. Uh, my girlfriend has no interest in it. I wouldn't mind if those were switched. But that's all right. I think my cat just likes all the different, like, you got a big TV and you just get all the bright colors of, like, Ridge or something on there. Oh, yeah. And definitely with as fast as Madeline can move around, you know, cats like that stuff. She's, like, basically almost like a laser pointer. Yeah. Like, you know, you're hyping her, hyper in around and everything. And it's, yeah, it's a little bit. Thankfully, she hasn't gone and attacked Madeline or anything. Uh, has, you know, a good amount of respect for her. So that's good. All right, so we're gonna get ready here for the second race, and again, we're gonna. Um, I got the points up right now. Um, I'm not sure if this is like super accurate to the T or not, but you know, T just currently in first with 36, and um, I'm just kind of looking over, you know, because we're heading into playoffs really soon here, like really, mm -hmm. really soon. Um. I'm going to say it's safe to say that TGH, Fladerby, Nero, and Chai all have playoff contentions. Like, they're locked in. There's nothing to worry about there. In regards to placing, that I'm not 100% sure on because, you know, um, I believe, I don't I have to double check, but I think like Chai and MC, she's, they're like four points apart. A sweep on one end and then a, a shout out on the other could change things. Um, yeah, Black Pair and Moose. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. like a lot. The top eight will be going to playoffs. And so, yeah, it's uh, a little tight towards the back there to see who those eight are. And it's also, as I was seeing someone say in chat, uh, both TGH and Nero would both really like three O's here. Um, especially, you know, TGH should try and keep this lead up on Ladervi would be big for him. Yeah, that is definitely true because there's only a one point difference between TGH and Flutter Derby right now, and also TGH and Flutter Derby uh, are the it's TGH it, it, that's their final race of the season is against each other, so Ooh. you could see a shift. So it's gonna be really exciting, needless to say. But um, yeah, we're gonna like I'm seeing like you have Scrub Lord and Sight. Um, like Scrub Lord has eight points, Sight has ten. I'm not sure. I know that scoreboard. I think uh, went against Shy Kitty last night. I don't. And I'm not sure what the the turnout was for that. But um. In oh yeah. Shy oh, did ahead. get the three zero. Um, okay. Scoreboard there. I was going to mention that um. In addition to, you know, the top eight making the playoffs, uh, the person that is in ninth place. Is also guaranteed to be in the season for the, the second season, whereas mm -hmm. the other three will have to, uh, if they choose to compete, you know, in the league, they can do so. But then they have to compete with a, a whole new batch of runners that will be uh, coming up. At least it's, I believe that's how it's supposed to go. So it's very exciting mm -hmm. as we get into that. But um, yeah. I thought you were going to say they were going to have to fight it out, but that sounds even better. I mean, you know, we can set up our own if we want. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want to see these guys uh, tussle for, for spots. That would be horrible. But um, no, battle. No, it's, gonna be, 
Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I mean, we have, we have Black Pair and then Moose and then Psych. That's the three you definitely want to pay attention to. Um, I don't think. Yeah, I think everybody else is generally. I think. Yeah, I think Malay, Sushi, Chai, Nero, Flo Derby, and TGH. All those guys have a seat in the playoffs. But we're looking at Black Pair, Moose, and Psyched. Um, maybe even Scrublord too. Scrublord could sneak in and just you know snipe out something. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see as we got a, you know a couple more matches to go. Yeah, as we've got a real nice close race here between the two of them. Uh, both pretty much have been on each other's necks the entire time, and I haven't seen really anything floppy or anything. It's just looked clean so far. Yeah, just kind of looking at the times. Also, very nicely done. We'll see how awake goes. Now, Nero, I believe, had a faster awake than TGH, so it's going to be interesting as we move forward. All right, here we go. Oh, Nero. <laughs> that looked way funnier than it needed to be. Nero did not get enough height. <laughs> it was just hypering into that wall. That's not. That's the things that we were talking about. And yeah, it cost him. I think that cost him like the lead. It's about a second, but that was enough. Yeah. The thing is, those small things. It's, it, it's those things too. With the high level of, of Celeste and like the caliber that these players are bringing to the table, I mean, obviously, time loss deaths are very easy to just be like, oh, they died. You know what I mean? But when you get to this level, you have to really try to see those, like, Nero slamming into that wall like that over and over again. Like, you have to see those small movement options that, like, someone that hasn't um, been following the game that much, they might not catch some of that. Right. Yeah, no, you can definitely, like, you watch someone that's really good versus, like, someone that's really, really good, and neither of them will necessarily mess anything up, but one person just... It's the little thing here and then the little thing there that's just, you know, that tenth of a second or quarter of a second that just adds up over and over. And you'll see one, you know, one of them just slowly pulling ahead from the other. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to watch. Ooh. I know a buddy of mine, uh, Ben Teasy. Doesn't he land. Left. Oh, did you just take a death there? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, a buddy of mine didn't land on the platform. Ben Teasy likes to refer to is the confidence in Madeline's movement, like if you have confidence, CGA is taking a death there too. Wow, actually, this allow did it. Oh no, we have a, a major, I'll yeah. The time For a second, I was yeah. like, did Nero get like 10 seconds ahead? Uh, but no, not quite at least. Yeah, it's fine. We can do it, we can do our traditional time stamps here, but yeah, um. Just having that confidence in, in Madeline's movement. And it's weird because, and I bring this up a lot <laughs> in, in this league, but you can kind of see when a runner is feeling themselves or feeling confident just based on the movement that Madeline has. It's it's weird when I say it, but trust me on that. You'll kind of just see it. Like, they're just kind of like moving around freely or like everything is just looking, I like to call scripted. That's like a big one to me. Right. Well, sometimes, like, watching, I'll just get into this mindset where you've just watched for, like, five minutes, and you're like, oh, right, this person never makes mistakes. Because you can see sometimes they're just going so smoothly that everything just looks perfectly done as it was supposed to be. And you mm -hmm. forget watching someone that, like, is human and can easily mess any of this up from time to time. It's it's cool to watch. I saw it. I believe Nero has a slight lead here. We're looking at about five seconds. If I'm not mistaken now. Nero did take some destined towels, so we'll see how he's gonna handle this one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, get so, that fast cycle too. He gets to there right about at six minutes. So we'll see uh, when TGH does this. Oh, he takes a death and then, uh, I hate doing the death cycle in this room. Yeah, and actually he was, he went the fastest way. I didn't even know you, I thought you had to wait <laughs> for the well, cycle that, to go, but. That's I what I not. always do. But no, people like to just slip right in there. I wonder, I don't think that's a demo. It could be, but I don't believe it is. I, I probably would just do it just to be safe. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, it looks so, like about a seven second lead from Nero. And now we're moving into demo, speaking of. Nero out to play. He's going to get it first try. Nice quick setup, too. In getting okay. that. Jumpy says it's delivery. not a demo. All right, perfect. T's getting set up for demo, too. I wonder if he's. Okay, he's going to play it safe. I felt like. Is he going to try to save the time here? If he gets it as well. Corner boost to boot. But Nero already in Oshiro. I don't remember any mishaps on Nero's in doing this chase. I'll have to wait and see. Oh no, he had a mishap early on, I think. And Teach getting the Oshiro bump there. Oh, nice. Doing the double bunny hop. Oh, yo, I didn't know that was faster. <laughs> that one was stupid clean. Oh my gosh. I'm going to talk to him about that one. We'll see. Okay, so Nero's at like a 406 entering this screen. So yeah, it's uh, it has been a good resort from him. As he will end up with uh, 417. So 417 with a death right there at the end. That's uh, that's a really good resort time. And teach about. I'm a little bit of a hang up here. But he is also clocking in. It's about a three second difference, I think, between the runner. Yeah, we're about three seconds difference as we head into resort. And um, already, we see the little bump right there from Nero. Just again, the. Oh no, again here too. Oh wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those two those two little mishaps there, like, actually could get Teej to, uh, to catch up. I mean, Teej had a mishap on that same section as Nero did too. But he gets the ultra here, so. Whew. Again, like, it doesn't seem like that makes a big difference, mm -hmm. and it does, and then... Yeah, nice job from TGH there, not uh, hitting that spike when he didn't get his dash back and managing to, to save that one. We're going to see Teach go for Archie yet again. Solid work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's other places that you can apply that to, because that'd be pretty dope. Um, I don't so, know where. Sorry. One of the places that you can apply the general concept of it, I believe, and chat, correct me if I'm wrong, is in 5A, where we had the Hamlet slash double bubble skip that long room. Uh, you can just go into the bubble and dash straight up and just catch the secret area. Uh, just straight up. So it, it's not really used anymore because we don't go that far into 5A. Uh, but it is a thing that you can do, which is pretty cool. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. That's right, always stresses me out. Oh, Teach not getting the Coyote uh, frames there, but having the backup on deck, it's going to allow Nero to pull ahead a little more. I mean, oh, oh, is he going to... No, oh, you can't save not that. quite able to save it. It was a good attempt, though. Yeah. Again, Ridge just not not being too cooperative. We got Nero, Nero in cliff face right now. Um, oh, taking a death there. So we're going to see he got in there at 950. I swear that cloud sometimes just does not give you the height you want, even if you do anything, everything right. Yeah, I, and that's Teach actually he running works, out of problems here, too. But... See, this is the reason why I hate this chapter. Yeah. <laughs> that cloud Fair is just enough. like, I don't want to, you know, some, some, some mechanics just don't want to cooperate with you. Like, can you just cooperate with me, please? I yeah. like all of the chapter except for that cloud. I see she's in the, the, the snowball there to get a little boost. But we're they looking at... Cleanly like, through a lot of these rooms, though. All right, so Nero looked like clocking in at a 1029. So T's, T's got a little work cut out for him. I think he's about 15 seconds behind. We'll see. Yeah, about 11. Yeah, there. so we'll save a little time there. Thankfully, he didn't do what he did in his previous race where he actually retried instead of skip cutscene there twice and actually that yeah. um 
you know, not not to throw salt into the wound or anything, but that was the run where he got twenty seven fifty two, I think it was, where he mm -hmm. basically tied world record. So he had he had a free four second time save <laughs> from that run that would have uh, gotten him a world record. Jeez. Gotten him the forty as yeah. well. It's gonna happen soon enough. Don't worry. Uh, and Nero with the yeet there, successfully. Yeah, so far, wow. Nero's actually gonna, gonna get a re looking to get a really good tape grab here. Well, soon. yeah, he had, he had a good one last time. We'll see if he can get a one oh nine this time. I. It's gonna be close. How's your menu, and you know? Oh, he got it. He got it. <laughs> nice. Very nice. It's a uh, solid work from him. Not easy to do. Mm -hmm. All the while, teach Diggy E as well. So I don't know if he's gonna be on pace with the with. The, yeah, he's uh, just a little bit behind from uh, what Nero had. He's looking to be maybe like a one thirteen. Yep, oh, I'm getting better at that. <laughs> <laughs> Solid work. Solid work. Yeah, so that's another four seconds there. But you know, Bubs is Bubs drops here, and Bubs drops is real. And Bubs it up. Oh yeah, yeah. you see that? Nice you see that? Yeah. I think I think he's pause buffering. I think he's pause buffering so that he makes sure that he gets the jump. And you know what? If that like makes it a hundred percent, yo, I'm all for that. Please. Yeah, no, that's uh, good from him. I mean. He's two for two with it so far. Yeah, if he's pause buffering that, I am all about that. Especially if it makes it, if it makes it, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah, I am ready to learn how to do that. I don't know if I am or not. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I'm so used to doing it the way that I do it. It's like, do I want to break tradition and then try to learn it again? It's like. Mm. Nice. I, I did see Teach there go for the uh, boost off of the button at the bottom there at the end of that long screen. That's a nice one that saves a little bit of time. Oh, yeah. I like Nero's approach into this room with the full Yeah, boost. I had seen that before. Yeah, he, does, he goes to the wall bounce, and it seems to get that secret to line up perfectly. I actually have incorporated that into my run as well. And he's also grabbing this strat here where you just... Skip nice. off of that. Nicely done. Someone's been doing their homework. Alright, so. Did Teach you, going for the other. Your, yeah, fancy strat. <laughs> you can get it just fine this way. Just kind of muscling through. Oh, here. Okay, here we go. Here's this drama that I want because Nero having some problems in the seeker room. But. Yeah, I'm gonna make it out. It's gonna allow, you know, just nice catch up here. Let me see. I mean, we'll see how Teach handles a lot of work to, uh, right to catch up to Nero right now. He's kind of moving. I remember, remember, you know, Nero had a nice lead going into chat, going into reflection, also, and by the time we got to battle and fight. Teach had made it up <laughs> by a lot. It's just kind of crazy. So we'll see if that can happen again. Yeah. We ooh, it's a uh, it's a good uh, two twenty four from Teach there. Yeah, and it's looking about an eight second difference, eight ish second difference between the two of them. Yeah, I made that word up. Eight ish. Eight. Yeah, eight. -ish. All right. Nero going for a lake skip, he's gonna get that. Mm -hmm. Adish is one of my favorite Pokemon. There you go. Mm -hmm. Alright, so and we got in that room that he died in last time, which is good. I'm just imagining that Pokemon with a giant eight on its forehead. I'm <laughs> trying hard not to laugh. <laughs> well, I think it's like Oddish, but instead of the flowers, it's just like a big eight. There you go. <laughs> what I'm imagining. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm easily entertained. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so we got Nero in Hollow's nice ultra into that feather. Holy smokes. Yeah, I like all these corner boosts that they're incorporating at the start of Reflection now. Like that one right there from TGH. Those look really nice to me. Yeah, um, I feel, you know, corner boost has been around for a while. I just think that there's a lot of people that haven't really um, opted to try to really push to, to incorporate more of them into your game. Uh, I believe we'll see on TJ's screen when we get to Summit in the Triple Ultra Room. He actually does a new strat for the second half of that room, which involves a few corner boosts here or there. And um, it definitely saves time and it looks really cool. So I'm hoping he pulls it off. I don't know if he did it last time or not. Keep an eye out. Wow. Nero just sliding through that Kevin block though. Holy smokes, that was super fast. Yeah, it's, it's looking like Nero is holding on to his lead here. I'm not seeing any mistakes. And, you know, like in that screen in particular, Nero had faster movement here. So we're going to find out because he's getting to the old lady checkpoint here at a 1632. Teach still about two screens behind. But I know he has a faster strat in his room versus what Nero did. So basically just avoiding the time to get the feather. So it's about eight seconds between the two of them as we head into Ravine and get ready for the battle and fight. Yeah. And for anyone wondering, Nero going for that checkpoint there, I believe loses about half a second over the fast strat. Correct me please if I'm incorrect. But it's it's a little deceptive, I feel, in that it really does not lose as much time as you think it might. And it's safer because if you die there, there you blend, you end up like halfway down the room instead of at the very beginning of it. Yeah, honestly, I think the jury is actually out <laughs> on whether or not it's fast or not. I think the way that Nero is going and the, the strats that he does for that last section um, actually keeps it about even if you were to take the shortcuts but you have to go for what he does so that's still a little tough but um everything's looking good so far now we're both in a battle and fight but to get to my favorite room on Nero's screen I mentioned this last time I just love this strat so much I know it looks so good. It's like, you want to know what Celeste is? Just show them that clip. Just show them that. That's what Celeste is about. And you're just like, oh man. Yeah, well, just, yeah, you've got the, the ultra at the beginning, and then, oh, as Tish does uh, get, catch the feather there, but then all of those afterwards, it does. It just looks so smooth. Mm hmm. Okay, so Nero about to get in a round two here. And again, like I said, not seeing mishaps or any drama happening here. But we'll see. He's gonna get into round two here at about an 1847. Teach not far off. But you know, second round of battling, I mean the big screens that we're gonna be looking for is the second to last screen and the final screen. And uh, I have seen some mishaps happen in these runs between all the runners on that last screen. Yeah. <laughs> Especially now, I, it's probably what, like a few months ago, however long ago, there started being a slightly uh, more advanced, faster strat for it that it's a little riskier to try and grab this feather, um, not the first one, but the one that's up above this fourth feather here without dying and people do mess that up from time to time uh but nero did no problem and he is doing pretty well yeah actually now that i'm looking at it uh hold on <laughs> i always pay when it, if i don't think he's gonna get a sub 20 coming out of reflection but it's gonna be really oh no actually hold on <laughs> wait a minute hold on <laughs> yeah it's like a 58 
Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Usually when I when I see a sub twenty going out and going into summit, um, it's it's time to take notice. <laughs> it is time to take notice because, like right, for example, here you go. Let's break this down. So you had what a, a, a 1957. So he had an 820 last uh, summit, which means he would have what. 20 is it 2807? 2817? Uh, yeah, like a 281817. Yeah, so like that's a that's a huge time. And Teach oh. also having a low time there that... too, so Ooh, I haven't actually seen that before from Nero. Uh he did die on it the first time, but it's a nice little way to not have to hit that last spring there. Uh, but that is, I mean, like a death like that is definitely going to be really costly as we see. Oh, well, as I say that, well, uh, PGH says I can do that too. So yeah, so with that, TGH had just caught up and then... Yeah, it's going to be a difference again. Now... We do need to point out that in the first race, Nero had the faster summit with an 820 versus Tej's 823s. You know, we talk about how summit is Tej's baby and how it's like you know he's just like really good at nailing everything. Uh, the other runners too, like you can't really just get a pass off of them. Also, we're getting a sync, by the way. <laughs> just in case you're wondering, just to give you a better idea here on how close we are and. Uh, Oh boy, here we go again. So I might as well just throw out, you know, the the obstacles and the riffraff that could be coming up here. Uh, I'm gonna call this coin room in 1000. And um, yeah, not yeah. This we're just gonna call this room right here, and it's not a problem for Nero. It's just very easy to miss those coins. Uh, we'll see. All right, he gets this here. Nice. Yeah. One of the nice things about the coin room is that it's pretty easy to fetch yourself back up even if you do miss something often, at least. Uh, hyper room is always scary there, but Nero hyper in through, no problem. Yeah, I think he's going to get out of here pretty, pretty cleanly. Actually, both of them so far. I'm not seeing any missed um, hypers out of the dream blocks from either runner. And then, now, we talked 1500. We know that Teach goes for the, the top route now. So he saves a little bit of time there, but... Yeah, well, you know. they did both go uh, for the not Frank Erzy room. Oh, like, really? Okay. Yes. Which saves like a tenth of a second or whatever it is. Uh, and just people the opportunity to spam the emote. Although, still feel free. Mm -hmm. Wow, Nero just plays into that triple ultra room. We're, we're yeah. gonna see if Teach do this. We'll do this strat as he heads into triple ultra. Let me see. Let me see if he's gonna go for it. Oh, now he's off cycle. We're gonna have to recover. It's still nicely done. Yeah, to not die there is huge. That is yeah. a big one to be able to recover from that. It definitely looked like. Um, Teach didn't get the entrance that he... I don't think he got the entrance that he wanted. Because they saw him do it hyper, like, as soon as he got into the transition. I right, see so for flat, it's a four-frame difference. Matter of preference. Respect. Room is a matter of preference. Actually, we saw Nier going for auto scroll skip, skip here, and, um... I feel like Teach is going to have to go for it now. Like he's going to have to go for it. If yeah. he wants to keep pace. And it doesn't look like he's going for it. Oh, yeah, no. So, okay, I mean, go with what you're comfortable with, for sure. It's uh, much better than dying there and then losing a ton of time. That is true. This is one of those things where it's like, when you see one runner go for it and they already have that lead, it just kind of like puts the, the pressure on the other runner where it's like, okay, well, 
you know, they went for the fastest strat. I have to go for that, or else I'm going to find opportunity uh, somewhere else to save that time and to catch. Nero deciding to jump onto some spikes there. Uh, I guess they looked fun. <laughs> oh, actually missing this room up too. There's, I know that it's just like one simple input, but there are some, some of the deaths sometimes just look a little goofy to me where it just looks like you're Madeline and you're just like, oh, well, I'm just going to dash into the, the abyss, basically, or into spikes or whatever I want. And yeah, it's uh, a decent lead now. As we see, they're basically synced up um with in-game time but nero going through door skip now and getting it no problem and we saw teach had problems in that long room uh it didn't look to be a problem for nero here i think he got it again he didn't get his dash back oh no Oh, yeah. And uh, that that's pretty much the same thing that happened last time, right? Yeah, he he didn't get his dash back and just took a death there. Yeah, and then taking it safe and not climbing onto the top of that block at the end there. And this is going to give Nero a nice edge here. I mean, as we're seeing it, you know, again, timers are synced up and Nero has a very good lead. I mean, it's gonna take a, it's gonna take a lot for this at this point, I believe. But you know, we're not out of the woods yet. So I got like twenty. You were getting it right this time. Nice. And then also, mm -hmm. like, teens could just barrel through some of these sections really quickly too. Like, for example, we know that Nero likes to grab that flag there and teach the opponent to nod. Yeah. Um, and then just pressure too. I mean, you know, it's. We have to wait until we see who hits the top first here. It's just in the air. The coin's flipping right now. Who knows? So, yeah. If it's a coin, I'm going to say that Nero has, uh, you know, a significant part of the coin. But it's, Definitely uh, agree. Yeah, as we come into... Know, we've got this guy right here. Nero gets it through it, no problem. He was a little to the left. I mean, successfully in the first race, but a little to the left. So I was curious to see if he was going to mess that one up this time, but he goes right down the middle. No problem. Option to get flag number nine. All right, so we want... It's going to be close. So Nero's PB is 28.08. I don't know if he's in realm of getting that. It's gonna be kind of close though. All right, Tej now actually opting to skip the cut, skip number nine. It works out for him. Big, yeah. As we see, you know, Chai Kitty likes to emulate things TGH does sometimes. Here we see TGH emulating a little bit of Chai Kitty with the uh, flat line skip. And Nero, yeah, he's coming up on flag two here, so we're not quite going to see a uh, PB, but it's a really good it time. It's a really solid time. This might be a, a, a league PB for him. Nope, I take that back because he got a 2808 in the league. He got his PB in the league, so there's that. That's good. And yeah, he takes uh, yeah. the second game. So Nero's we're going to see it come game. down to this third game here. Teach wrapping it up here, getting a 28-38. So, again, solid performance from both runners as well. Nero playing out of his mind, snatching up that second game. Yeah, TGH having a better time in this race uh, than the last one, but it didn't matter because uh, Nero just did so well with it. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so I'm seeing that the the runners have opted to take just a just a little a little rest time here. You know, I'm I, I don't blame them. Playing Celeste nonstop, I, such a high intensity level and everything else. It's um it's important to try to have that that rest. In it is, yeah. It's I mean not just physically draining, but it can be a little mentally draining for sure. Um, yeah. This feels like a great time to ask you more about your cat, unless you have other Celeste-related things that you would like to chat about. It just so happens that I do. Oh, so okay. <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about where all of these runners, I mean, we talked about playoffs and all this other stuff. Let's talk about where this is going to come to head, which is Pace. Again, folks, Pace coming up extra fast. It's going to be happening April 25th through the 28th at Xanadu Games in Laurel Park. Um, we've got Super Mario Odyssey Grand Finals for their league. We've got the Mario 64 70 Star Division 1 Grand Finals. And of course, we got the Celeste Grand Finals too. In addition to that, because I know all y'all love these speedruns and races, we have so many showcases of different runs of different games. For example, um, I know that Brian Otto is going to be doing Titanfall 2. Um, I have a run. I'm doing Celeste Invisible Percent. I believe Dave Stereo has a couple of runs as well. I think Troy of Athens has a run. There's a lot of people that are just going forth and coming through, showcasing all the games that they love. It's going to be very hype, you know, and it's 24 7 kind of thing during that whole period. And yeah, I mean, if you can make it, go for it. Tickets are still on sale. You can still register. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. And then we also have, um, you know, for the for the other. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to hold my push to talk button and click at the same time. It's not working. <laughs> um, for the, I always mess this up, but we have Smash and Splash as well, and that is taking place uh, May 31st to June 2nd, and. Um, that's the whole colliding of fighting games and speed running. Let me see. I believe I'm really excited for that this year. That looks like it's going to be a lot of fun because it's traditionally just been Smash, uh, but this year they're adding in a lot of uh, the speed running stuff to it. And I mean, it's especially like Melee is such an old classic game, and you know a lot of the games that are speed run our old classic games, so I feel like there's just so much uh, overlap and connection between the two communities. Um, as you saw at places like Smash the Record and stuff like that, where, you know, you would have both. So it's exciting to see, now that Smash the Record's gone, I feel like Smash and Splash is a little taking part of that place in combining the two. Yeah, it looks really hype. I watched the trailer and was just very excited for it. And then also, you know, they're adding in like Street Fighter Five is going to be there, Tekken Seven is going to be there. Um, they actually have uh, looks like there's DDR is going to be there too this year. And then also, you know, um, I think it's I know that this Mario sixty four is it should be there, and I want to say the Mario Kart time trials as well. And if you haven't been watching those, woo, boy, those are mad hype. Yeah, I, that sounds like the second best event you've mentioned after uh, the Pace one. So yeah, that, uh, I'm excited to see both of those. So you get, get your tickets if you can. Yeah, and I know the, speaking of the combination of the two, like the Xanadu venue, the one that uh like the bg boot camp smash stream oh, yeah. is uh so it's for i've never like been there but from like pictures and the streams and everything i've seen it's a really nice place yeah i've seen it in, uh a few streams from there as well i'm looking forward to seeing the event in person and then also too you know if you don't want to wait and want more speedrunning action. We have more nonsense and drama coming up after this. We've got um, a 70 star race between. Oh, this is. Ooh, this is actually pretty hype. D Whatever versus CLG Cheese. 
and then after that we got a triple threat of Mario Kart Double Dash uh, with Jayhawk and Rastern Koopa, followed by Optimistic Emo and Baseball Kid, and then Baseball Kid playing against Jayhawk. So we got a, a couple double headers here. And then we're closing it out with a uh, 70 Star League Division One match between Vero and Toast Rider 91, I think. I know that some some of them are were canceled or rescheduled or whatever, so uh, take that into consideration. But we are about to get ready for this final race. Folks, this is, I think this, I feel like this is the first time, at least for me, from a commentary standpoint, where uh, we're going into race three and it's one to one. I feel like I haven't seen this in a very long time. So this is actually really, really hype. Yeah, that uh, it's not the most common thing. Uh, Celeste being such a such a high game of skill, um, you know, even if you mess up a few times and it's like a 20, 30 second difference, like with a lot of these races, that's still not going to be enough to overtake the other person. Um, so see, being able to see these matches where it is like TGH and Nero and it is one a treat. It's uh, pretty exciting. I, and I have no idea what's going to happen here. I'm very excited to find out. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to look back on the second race in particular. Like Nero was playing at a super high caliber. Uh, I think, like, Teach just, um, I can't recall, like, anywhere where, like, there might have been mishaps or, like, nonsense that was occurring. So we're just gonna wait and see. Just you know, I mean, I know f one one of my uh, favorite quarterbacks would always talk about like you know it's always zero zero every time. Just worry about it like that. So probably the same thing. Just gotta win one more. How hard can that be, right? Yeah, yeah. Anything can happen. You know, it's uh just got it's about half an hour more. Just gotta play really good for that half an hour, and then you got it. So simple. And by really good, I mean like really, 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 really good. Just about the best you've ever played. Mm -hmm. Might be necessary. Now we're seeing that T's taking a death in that room. But it looks to be not as detrimental as I thought it was going to be. So I wonder if Nero actually has some mishaps here. It's about a second difference already when we are heading into old site. So this is a lot closer. Usually, you know... We kind of pan off uh, sitting in old site and like, eh, not a lot's going on. But I think with the caliber of these two in particular, because I mean, this is like first and third, if I'm not mistaken, on the, yeah. on the speed run first third. Third. So, you know, you definitely want, <laughs> you need to be in top form. And actually, yeah, yeah. it's like, a, let's see, I'm bad at math, hold on. It's like a 16... <laughs> Yeah, 16 second difference between the PBs and, and Celeste, that's not a lot. Yeah, like at all. no at all. No, and yeah, like you said, the first and third, they're the bread to a nice little uh, platter V sandwich there. I uh, know. Getting to see this is yeah, just really exciting. You know what would have been dope at Pace? A nice three-way race between TJH, Flutterian, and Nero. I know that that's not going to happen because, you know, they've got more important things to worry about if they make it to mm -hmm. the second part. But, like, I know that there was a showcase where I think it was um, Sushi, Flutterby, and TGH, if I'm not mistaken, but, you know, I would like to see some more some more uh, gatherings like that. It would be really exciting. Yeah, same. I don't know about commentating it though, because like it's already hard enough to keep track of two screens. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can actually keep track of three of them. Yeah, well, you just need uh, you know, we got two commentators for the two screens. That just need true. some three commentators for the three screens. That's enough. Oh my god, can we talk about uh, this sink real quick? Yeah, that's nice. Oh man, mm -hmm. hypnotizing. Get in the corner boost too. Mm, probably gonna want a clip of that because that was 
That was, that was on some Bob Ross. That was on some Bob Ross right there. That was on that sculptor. That's that was on par with soap carving and sand sculpting, cutting, whatever you want to call it. So, oh, I hate saying this word, but so satisfying. Satisfying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't. I hate that that word has gotten like to be just this super buzzworthy word about like ASMR related things. It drives me nuts. Well, someone in chat just said delicious. You know, you could say delicious instead of satisfying. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not, you know, delicious generally goes towards um, something that you eat. And I'm not trying to eat carved soap. And I'm not trying to eat sand. Fair enough. And I'm not, trying, not... To, and I'm not trying to eat a video game either. So there's that. But no, um, it's a good it's just, point. I, I blame all those clickbaity, you know, sites on Facebook and social media. They're just like, we're going to take the word satisfying and run with it. It's just like, ugh. As we still, they're, they're still really nicely synced. Um, it's beautiful to see. It's, uh, it, it's not, it's not really sexy. Well, it's a little sexy. Um, it's cool. It's what, you know, whatever you want to call it, whatever positive thing you want to call it. It's just enjoyable to watch as we see them both here in a huge mess yeah we see that Nero actually had a little bit of a hang up there but was able to uh, recover hypnotizing is... I like hypnotizing. hypnotizing is a pretty good one I like that one too Actually, I think I was gonna say that, but I was hypnotized and caught in a trance. Caught wow. in a trance. There we go. We can use that one too. In trance, enchanting. Entrancing and yeah. wait. Yeah, that's a word, right? Yeah, that's a word. Anything but constantly using satisfying. Oh, and then also like so satisfying. I was like, can you please? Can well, yeah. When you say it like that. Yeah. It's like this artist, the way the artist blend paints together, it's so satisfying. And it's like, you just ruined it for me. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, a, what was the other buzzworthy word that they had a couple, I think a year prior. Oh, like goals, right? You remember how it's like hashtags, oh, spot yeah. goals, hashtag bestie goals. And like, it's like, no, <laughs> stop, stop, stop putting goals in front of everything. Everything can be a goal. Way. Yeah, Nero, uh... Nero wants, yeah, Nero wants the goal of getting out of this room without dying. No death goals. Yeah. Yep. Hashtag no death goals. That's... It's like, oh, it's like, and I don't know why I do that voice. It's not fair. <laughs> but you do a just... really good Valley Girl, though. That was yeah, nice. it's like, just... It was sad oh to listen to. Yeah. I can just, like, mouth off an Instagram post. I'm like... Going to stop by Michael's and get my love laugh piece uh, new poster. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag squad goals. Hashtag decoration skills. Hashtag new me, new year. You know, it's just like, ah! Yeah. No, it's <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, hashtag demo dash right here as, oh, we see our first actual first, yeah. failed demo dash uh, for Nero, but he gets it the next time and then is able to get the corner boost afterwards. He's yeah. good. Teach in the Oshiro battle here too. <laughs> I'm sorry to go on that tangent. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things I just get like super riled up about. Cause I want to yeah, watch those like yeah. ASMR videos, but I just hate the headline. It's like, ah. Mm -hmm. I am your pain. Coming forth at a very solid Ashiro, we got one screen to go, which is the one that, you know, is kind of important. <laughs> it uh, it messed him up a little bit last time, for sure. Uh, but he is getting through it a lot better this time. It hurt last time that he managed to get on Death Cycle at almost immediately. Uh, and so to be able to do his regular cycle the whole way through, a lot more comfortable. Yeah, and speaking of which, Nero actually being off cycle there i don't think he encountered a death i think he might have missed uh a dump or something like that and just ran into a wall 
Yeah, and we see a decent lead here for Teach, uh, like 12 seconds or so. Because T's uh, power run through pretty well. That was actually... That must have been a really good chapters 1 through 3. Because he was at... The sub 8 going into chapter 4? Well, so the way I always thought about it, before the whole bird skip thing, anything that was sub 8 I was like really, really impressive. Um, and then, you know, the, the bird shaves off 15 seconds. So now anything that's like sub 745, I think is doing really well as kind of what I look for at the end of chapter three. Uh, and he definitely had it there. Okay, I did see someone mention um, the question of like league PBs, which we do have available. I know for Nero, his league PB is uh, his current PB, 2808. Actually, Teach's league PB is 2752. So like I should have known that because I was there when he did. Yeah, oh, twenty seven fifty three. But you know, it's like a, a millisecond or whatever. He's not enjoying those specific spikes today, but he's able to get through it with one small death. Sorry, I was, I was reading through the stats. <laughs> My uh, bad. Mm -hmm. But we're uh, coming up on cliff face here now. With the howling wind. So I know you don't like Ridge, but how would you describe the feeling of like properly getting through these heavy wind screens just like perfectly? What app did you use? Um relief really yeah <laughs> relieving <laughs> more like i just like <sighs> fair enough it's over <laughs> i can move i said he should take a death there but he's got he a did. nice lead here um and something that i saw him do in the first race and it's sort of related to why he died on this one i didn't realize so if you because you try and with that I guess essentially reverse ultra go diagonal left down out of the bubble. Um, but both times T just just gone straight left and then he's still gone for the ultra, which I didn't realize you could make. Um, and the first race he got it, he was able to get it successfully. And this one, he was just a little short, uh, on the ultra for it and it cost him a little bit of time. Wow, Teach getting that fast drive in that room. <laughs> that was always that one always makes me nervous. Because those saw blades will come out of nowhere and just I know, and they're just like right and, there. Oh my god, near getting it too. Jeez. My heart. What are you two doing? <laughs> oh we got another yeet. Right. I don't wanna yell it right now. As we <laughs> I uh, believe getting the yeet and Nero as well. Yes, Nero getting it as well. Uh, so a solid double yeet from them. Oh, this is a fantastic team time for Tej. A 110. Mm -hmm. Nero, not too far behind. He might actually have a fast one. He might get 109 here. So you can see. Also 110. Woo! Oh but yeah, uh, oh 110, boy. 109, 110 from Nero is a pretty good day of uh, tape grabs. This is actually... This is, mm, this is feeling kind of nutty. <laughs> like, I feel like the pace is really strong on both of them here, but we're getting into... Bubs drop territory here. 
Knife okay. is going to get it. Successful from Teach. That's a okay. big one. But we're going to see Nero go for the pause buffer again, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, pause buffers the heck out of it. Now, I guess, even though if it's 100%, I wonder if it's actually faster or on on pace with the, the normal strat. I feel like it's not, but I feel like we're also getting into, like, the, you know, just a small amount of frames. Yeah, it, I think it's definitely worth it, considering that's, like, one of the main places where you can really lose time and really mess up a race. I, to spend a little bit of time uh, pause buffering it, I think. Is no <gasps> oh, no. Nero. Oh, no. Taking Ooh. a huge death. That's going to allow Tisha to pull out in front here by a nice couple of seconds. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I just saw it on the corner oh, of my yeah, eye. No. I was like, oh, no. That was a big one. As uh, I get a good luck in chat, thank you very much. Always appreciated. Uh, but yeah, Nero entering the uh, spooky section of the temple here. Going for that wall bounce and getting those coins lined up again. Yeah, this is where it's going to be... This is where it's, it's tough when you're going against T change. And I'm going to pull again the um, the GSA bracket tournament that these two uh, went heads up against. Um, it just got down to the point where like Teach just got that lead and like it was just near impossible to to try to take it from him. And um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that that's happening now because you know any, we still have a lot of game to go but once we get in the summit it's going to be very Real apparent on if it's going to be possible or not. And we're seeing, you know, Nero having some mishaps here in the gauntlet room. Which, you know, happens. Yeah, this is unfortunate for Nero. And it's it's exacerbated by Teej getting a 221. Uh, yeah. So you mess up and you hope that maybe the other person is too. And then it turns out they're doing really, really well. Uh, so that's always tough as we see. Um, gosh. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty sizable. Yeah, I'm also just kind of looking at the time here. Um, we're gonna want to pay attention to what time Teach gets out of reflection. I think. I think we're definitely gonna want to pay attention to that. Cause he's like, yeah, 14 minutes going into chapter six. I'm gonna um. I'm just going to go to speedrun.com and just kind of pay attention to what Teach's time was when he left <laughs> Reflection. I just have a better idea here because um, yeah. I'm getting a little antsy. <laughs> I feel like that, like, that's, maybe... That's a maybe, good time. Yeah, like, maybe Nero taking the game from Teach, is, he just kind of gets, like, ah, just got super amped up and wants to close this one out. No, that is, and I remember before the the prologue change once, Vlad getting a time of fourteen zero x out of Summit, and that was like his absurdly good one. And so this is just about on par with that. Uh, so this is uh this is looking promising. Also, A Rod, is that you? Ugh. <laughs> not, a, not a fan. <laughs> That's because I'm biased. You know, he used to be uh, a mariner at one point. Oh, yeah. Understandable. And I know for, I don't know if people are aware the Seattle fans of their sport teams. They're crazy. I'm just going to put it out there. Oh, no. Teach did not get his ultra there. Just Madden was like, see you later. Bye. But, it was, you know, a short mistake. Mm -hmm. And it does have and... make to take a different path uh, when he takes it the second time, which is a little slower, but not by too much. All right. So I'm looking at... It looks like. Oh wait, no, I'm lying. No, I'm not. It's uh, 1941 is what Teach had going into summit on his current uh, world record. So, so you can be mindful of. 
Yeah, no, Seattle fans are, are very rabid about their um their players. Yeah, oh, Nero not hitting that feather on the death there. Uh, and that costs him a little bit of time. Yeah, and people in chat saying that uh, the ILPB for Reflection is a 531 by Phoenix. Wow. Uh, of course, these are things by Phoenix that we never actually really see. Um, so they're kind of like Schrodinger's PBs to me, in that they both exist and don't exist. Oh yeah, because um, he doesn't ever, he doesn't ever post anything up on the boards, right? Cause, like, no, he he's too this... he's too cool for that. As we are getting into uh, one of your favorite screens here. Oh yeah. Actually, it's a two for one because Nero's getting ready for battle and boost as well. Yeah, ooh, battle and boost. That fe that just feels nice. If you haven't played Celeste, uh, go and uh, I'm gonna say just learn battle and boost and just feels good. That's nuts that the 531 is the IL record in here because my time is a 620. Actually, I just. I randomly PB'd Reflection uh, during a race yesterday with a 622, and I paid that time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it should be better. Faster. But yeah, I mean... I... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I got like a 643. I was, I was happy with that. So it's all a matter of uh, different levels of opinion there. Yeah, that is true. But like, um, I don't know. I like it. For my um, PB journey, it's been kind of rough since I've hit sub 35. I'm looking to try to get to sub 32, but I have. I'm well, one thing. I have to practice Golden Ridge, and I. Oh, good. <laughs> It's just like, it's like being told to clean out the garage. I'm just like, uh, do I have to? Yeah. It's like, I don't really want to. Okay, now this is... Ooh, this is going to be pretty close here. You got Tej getting to battle in at 1923. Fortunately, my feet is being choppy again. I apologize. Yeah, same. Uh, but we can still tell that he's... So he got up a 531. Um... It's all solid. And yeah, I mean, this is going to be... Oh my gosh, he's one second off. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Take a deep breath. We'll see yeah, how... It's, it's... This is definitely PBable. We'll see. And I'm pretty sure he's probably aware of that too. I don't recall what his... But yeah. uh, and this isn't something great for someone on commentary. But in these situations, I always I just want to like look away. I'm just like worried that this little thing here, or that little thing there, is gonna go wrong because there's 12 million different opportunities for it. Uh, but it's it's always just so impressive to see when there's all this pressure on and everything, still managing to get every single little thing is just so incredibly difficult. Yeah, and we got Nero clocking out at 2027, 20, heading into Summit here. Um, it's going to be still good pace on both of them, too. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell you guys right now, um, you know, we have, as commentators, we have a job to do. And one of those things to do is to throw those curses out. So as much as I want to see a PB happen in this race, I'm still going to continue to do my job diligently. And if God forbid that I mess up and cause a curse onto somebody, you know, that's just how it goes. I mean, it like, happens. I've been in this boat before with, <laughs> so I'm totally fine with it. And I hope that you guys are too. Cause I mean, you know, I don't want to sit here and just like take a deep breath and just not talk. Cause then it's like, oh, well, what's the fun in that? I mean, like, for example, like, you know, we're 1000 right now and T just 1000 has been very clean. 
Mm -hmm. uh, not just in the race, just in general overall. So in life, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Nero, we're seeing a little bit of mistakes here coming out of the reflection portion of uh, that. I got a little nervous there because he didn't get enough. I thought he wasn't high enough for that that dream block, but so far so good. Um. Oh yeah. I mean, okay, as goofy as it sounds, because we're talking about commentator curse. Like, it's just, it's just a meme. It just kind of happens. Sometimes when it happens, it happens really well. It's great. <laughs> but you know, it's it's just part of what you do. I mean, like the, the runners can't hear what we're saying, so Correct. it's just you know we don't have that influence like that. I don't think I have enough psychic power to thwart someone's thing. You know run like that because if i do then i would rather do something else with that <laughs> with that mutant ability yeah i would sure love to yeah like if i had the if i had the ability to like cause someone to like you know make a change <laughs> like i'd rather do it in something you know mm -hmm. a little and more here we're like, seeing... oh no Ooh, no went for the strat that's the strat that i was talking about that was, yeah. Oh, and you see him there, I think, a little cautious or potentially wanting to avoid it. And uh, it's that that's a rough death to take. Yeah, that was a lot of time lost there. But I respect I respect the move that he went for it because that is such a good strat. I don't think I don't think it's out yet. I wouldn't don't don't call it. Don't call, you know, it's not over. Don't throw your not like this is up there yet. That I mean, like, funny though was just it was just there. Mm -hmm. it, was, ugh, it was very there, and it just fucked everything. It uh, it, you know, just came in it, and caused drama. Yeah, it really did. And that's all right. I mean, still, this is girl you were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's just it was just not it's just not Ooh. satisfying. I, but now that's, look, yeah, that's now what that's that funny sounds like. Now here we go. So he had that mishap, right? In 1500. This time he goes for auto scroll, skip, skip. So mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Um, he has he those where he's at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He knows what he needs to do to try to stay on pace. And I'm seeing in chat that, uh, you know, flat flat is pointing out that PB's not dead. He's still over about about four seconds. So, you know, I wouldn't hold him out yet, especially like once he gets into 3000, he could just start zooming and booming. Unfortunately, we're seeing on Nero's screen a death there in that top route room. Mm -hmm. And he's just making his way through. And I know for the auto scroller skip skip, there's been uh, some push recently to name it a uh, bounding under the terrain because you go under things there and, you know, <laughs> but, bounding uh, under the terrain. Instead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that's just you oh, know, no. something to oh, keep in mind. Oh, Teach. Going for that corner boost there, and that's what you see him do it before, um, doing the two straight uh, up four dashes. But he went for the corner boost there, and unfortunately took a death running into that spike. Just a lot of time lost in this room, but still picking up the slack and making his way through. As uh, Nero hitting the good butt there, and uh, succeeding. So that's good from him. And yeah, we see uh, close to the end here. What I want to see from uh, Tej is uh, successfully completing this final room in 2500. Yeah, this is this has been a problem for both races. All right, he gets it there. Just was not getting his dashes back, and Mantle was like, "Well, I got better places to go." Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's very accurate. All right. All right. So it's still. I don't, yeah, he, there's, chat was saying he had a 2516 coming into 3000, so he's still a little off from that, but I don't know if he has the, the places here to like, you know, to pick it up. We'll have to see, we, I mean, he could just, oh. Oh, he could I was just literally about to ask, could we see a 27, and right as I say that, the Steve Vlad in the chat say, 27 is dead too, uh, and I am not one to question Vlad, so, yeah. We're gonna see a really good time. It's yeah, still a very impressive time nonetheless. And Nero's still on just on the heels here. But like the lead the lead 
in addition to the amount of time left in the run, um, it's gonna take like a natural disaster to to have this thing turn around. And yeah. I know my commentary, nice. my, <laughs> my commentary, Chris, is not that strong, so. <laughs> Not quite. And another uh, Flag 20 death there, as uh, Flag 20 claims another victim. You know, I want to see... I want to see... I feel like that there are demo opportunities in Updraft. And I want to see someone, like, figure it out. I noticed that someone talked about, I think, uh, on Flag 13, as a matter of fact, I think there's a possibility you can demo up into that section. But it's just mm. not high enough, or something like that. And um, I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see a demo in Summit. Well, if you want to see Summit demos, you should check out Seven B. Um, has yeah. at least one pretty consistent one, actually, and I think a couple other ones as well. Actually, funny story in the uh, Celeste eighty percent uh, bracket tournament that I was also in. I didn't get very far, but. I actually did a demo in 7A on flag four. I was like, wow. I'm just going to go okay. for it. I, yeah, I knew <laughs> nice. I wasn't going to win. I was against uh, Star Cruncher had a, a mile way faster time than me. I was like, well, I'm just going to go for this demo here. Why not? And I got it first try and uh, they kind of like went off about it. Oh, is there a lot of demos in ARB? Let's go. I just want to see more of them. I feel like that that might be like the next opportunity. I mean, it's not going to save as much time as demo in chapter three, but given it there, as the teach now on the home stretch, clocking very respectable time. Right, Twenty. Let's go. And he uh, takes it two to one. So congratulations yep. to him. Getting that bonus. But now Nero on flag number 10. Sorry, I had a frog in my throat, my bad. Oh no. Let's move it through. I'm getting ready for the final stretch here. Still a nice, decent time. Definitely on pace to get a sub 29. Oh boy, this was a quite the ride, if I say so myself. It was. This is fun. Um, we'll see. I think we might have some time for an interview. I'm not sure if Nero will jump in for the interview or not, but Teach might pop in here. In just one second. We're gonna go ahead and wait and see Nero finish this one out in the meantime. Getting ready for flag number one here. Oh, it's gonna be close. He should still be able to get a, uh, a sub, oh, no, wait, mm -hmm. oh, is he going to get sub 28, nine, excuse me, right on the dot, 29. Exactly 29. How's it going, Tej? Hey, how's it going, guys? <clears throat> Doing well. Um, Good. Congrats on your 2-1 vic victory today. Uh, definitely had us a little nervous as you were going into summit on that last race uh yeah a little bit it's kind of it was kind of a shame about that summit um but you know everything else was solid i can't complain at all in the last race at least the, yeah. the second the the other two were uh i i actually have a story about the other two um oh, but go for it. yeah um i'm not usually the type to make excuses um at least i don't think i am but uh I realized after the second race that I forgot to, um, that I usually play Celeste on my computer with, uh, like I, I turn the priority up on the game, like on my task manager, and I mm -hmm. forgot to do that for the first two races. Uh, so my game was running like kind of choppy, like choppier than I'm used to. I could still play, but like it just wasn't what I, what I was used to and I was making some pretty dumb mistakes. Yeah, um, I mean, that'll do it. That'll yeah, definitely and, make an impact. And, but yeah. and then Sorry. before the before the third race i uh happened to notice it and turn it on to to high instead of normal and then um, you got a 2804 so, 
<laughs> and just like and just in general in addition to that everything else felt way more comfortable uh and like i i've always said for me like uh how well i play depends solely on like how comfortable i feel just like sitting and holding the controller nowadays uh and that for that last race i felt very comfortable so that's good that's good how do you feel your uh time it with odyssey has affected you positively or negatively here with celeste my just my casual playthrough yeah uh you know, I, you got some races there against the koopas and everything and you know oh i mean that that's just been purely for fun like that hasn't that hasn't been speedrunning related like at all i just uh i just got done with a casual playthrough and i'm continuing to play through the post game casually and i'm like it's it's kind of a break from speed running rather than uh rather than an intertwining of uh of that game and and speed running but yeah it's uh i feel like sometimes i need to get away from the game a little bit of celeste i mean and mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes you know yeah. sometimes it's just good for you get away from it and not think too much about it and everything for sure all right, Teach. <clears throat> so next week is your final race of the league. And um, it's definitely one I think a lot of people have been waiting to see. And that is, of course, you versus Fladerby. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Fladerby has, in a, in the, in a, tur in a tournament race setting, has, been, has performed very well against you. Do you feel that he's going to bring that again as we move towards the final race? I think that's just the type of player that Flat is, to be honest with you. He plays his best in pressure situations, whether or not he wants to admit it. Um, and, you know, that that has definitely shown in the past versus me. He, you know, the time in the speed gaming race, he got a uh, he got world record versus me, I think with a twenty nine thirty one back when the world rec world record was that. Um, and. Yeah, basically, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I am. I am uh, bracing for it, you know. I'm practicing hard for it, and I'm I'm trying to get as ready for it as I can. But yeah, it's uh, you know, I would I was really nervous going into this race too. Uh, I can't imagine how nervous I'm going to be going into there. But yeah, it's uh, I got to do my best to not let it get to me, and I'll be I'll be okay to give Flat some good matches. I think. Yeah, and actually, I'm getting I just got prepared for that too. I signed up to. Uh commentate that race as well so <laughs> i'm never looking forward to Sweet. it man like it's a i think it'll be a great way to close out the league as we head towards the playoffs and everything else um do i guess like as we start to move towards the second phase of the league what are you do you feel like you're going to change your approach to the game are you going to try to find other like you know nooks and crannies to save some time or are you just going to still go the consistency route where you're just going to keep trying to keep your time at a very good pace like what's what are, your, um, what are your plans i think for now i've gotten uh like i've gotten my strat like set to uh, a sort of place where i don't think it needs to be too much more optimized it's just all about consistency at this point um and yeah so i think bottom line for that is uh yeah, I, I don't intend to change much, I don't think, from here on out. Do you think that there'd be a point in time where if you started feeling threatened towards the end, you might go for, like, checkpointless demo or something like that in one of the races? It depends. Uh, I mean, I was on a pretty decent pace through, uh, through like, halfway through Resort in this run, and uh, I have a lot of respect for uh, Nero as a runner, so I decided to do not checkpointless, uh, regardless of the fact that I think I could have uh i honestly was almost on like ilpb pace through like up until demo dash and resort but i decided anyway to do checkpoint um just because you know it's i knew it was i had a feeling it was still close regardless mm -hmm. uh, but yeah i mean there there's a time and a place to go for checkpointless demo and uh from here on out i think especially in the playoffs um against the top runners i don't think checkpointless demo is really in the cards for me Okay. Along with other risky strats, like for instance, the auto scroller skip in 2000. Um, I feel like the only reason I went for that 
in uh in this run is because it still had a chance to pb <laughs> for me personally um so i wanted to try and go for that but that didn't really work out but i think in any other circumstance versus near i probably would have uh i probably would have opted out of that just like i did in the first two races all right cool well, again thank you so much for popping in for the interview and congrats again on your 2-1 victory against nero today thank you very much thank you guys for commentating Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up again don't go anywhere folks because we got a hot race coming in with super mario 64 70 star league division one it's d whatever versus clg cheese you definitely don't want to miss that one and uh we will be back with more celeste action tomorrow so be sure to check out that schedule uh espo any words uh before we head out uh just that it's been a lot of fun i enjoyed uh and hopefully we'll do it again soon Yep, I had a great time commentating with you, and overall, it's a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Go ahead and enjoy the tunes as we head to intermission, and uh, we'll see you at the finish line.